Chapter eight, strategy is a plan or a way to do something. Imminent, it means it's about to happen. Astute is another word for intelligent. Petrified, so scared you can't move. Disaster in the dining room. I realized then there was nothing I could do for Benicula during the day since he was sleeping, but that gave me time to plan my strategy. At first, I thought I would bring food to his cage, but then it occurred to me that Chester must be taking everything away that was given to him. Pete and Toby usually left lettuce for Benicula during the day while he was sleeping, and Chester, ever watchful, probably nabbed it each evening just before the rabbit woke. No, there'd have to be another way. I thought and thought all afternoon, and I could see that Chester had done a good job of isolating Benicula from his food. There was no way I could think of to overcome Chester's game plan. As evening grew closer and I grew more and more frantic, I stumbled into the dining room and saw the answer to my problem sitting before me on the table. It was a big bowl of salad. All I had to do was get Benicula to the salad and let him get his fill before the family came in to eat. With that funny white dressing on it, they would never notice if a few vegetables were white. I ran to the hallway to check the clock, 6.15. It would be 15 minutes before the sun went down and Benicula woke up. I would then need at least five minutes to get him from his cage to the table and feed him. All I had to do was make sure nobody came into the room until he had finished. I needed a good 20 minutes at least. I went back to the living room. Chester was asleep on his brown velvet chair, shedding in his sleep, still worn out from the previous night's activities. I checked upstairs. Toby was reading in his room, the last chapter of Treasure Island, I noted. Pete, who should have been doing his homework, was listening to records in his room. I ran down to the kitchen. Hello, Harold, Mrs. Monroe said as I came through the door. What's new? Other than a rabbit starving in the next room and an imminent attack on your salad bowl? Nothing, I thought. I stood at her feet and panted. She scratched my head. This gave me a moment to check out how far she was in her cooking. Sorry, Harold, she said. I have to baste this chicken. I noticed the oven timer still had 35 minutes to go. It'll be tight, I thought, but I can make it. Now, where is Mr. Monroe? I went to the front door and whimpered loudly. Mrs. Monroe followed me. Are you waiting for Daddy, Harold? He'll be back home soon. Soon wasn't good enough. How soon, I whimpered again. Patience, boy. He's late at a school meeting. He should be here any time. She went back into the kitchen and I checked the clock. 6.25. It was getting dark and Chester was still asleep. Time to swing into action. Having watched Chester undo the lock on Benicula's cage and having participated in that unfortunate steak episode some days earlier, I knew I would have no problem getting Benicula out. I just had to be a little more careful when, where I positioned my head. 
so that I wouldn't find myself in the humiliating predicament of getting stuck a second time. My timing was perfect. With binoculars swinging peacefully from my teeth, I made my way stealthily toward the dining room as the last rays of sunlight gave way to the dark of night. Once inside the dining room door, Benicula awakened in great bewilderment. It was not every day, after all, that one finds oneself, upon awakening, hanging from the jaws of a fellow creature, even so caring and gentle a creature as myself. Benicula opened his eyes wide and turned his face as best he could to me. I jumped up onto the nearest chair and placed the rabbit safely on the table's edge. Okay, I whispered, there's your dinner. Go get it. Get your fill as fast as you can, poor bunny. I'll stand guard. I don't know that Benicula fully understood what was going on, but the sight of the vegetables piled high in the center of the table sent him scurrying in their direction. He was very hungry. As luck would have it, and I should have anticipated, Chester's sense of timing was as astute as my own. No sooner had Benicula reached the edge of the salad bowl than the door swung open and Chester bounded into the room. He surveyed the scene frantically. I was unable to act fast enough. Upon seeing Benicula about to enjoy his first bite of nourishment in days, Chester leaped across the table, seemingly without touching the floor, chairs, or anything else between himself and our furry friend, and landed directly on top of the bunny. Oh, no, you don't, he shrieked. Benicula, not sure what to do, jumped high in the air and landed with a great scattering of greens smack in the center of the salad bowl. Lettuce and tomatoes and carrots and cucumbers went flying all over the table and onto the floor. Chester flattened his ears, wiggled his rear end, and smiled. In anticipation to, oops, sorry, in anticipation. To cat observers, this is known as the attack position. Run, Benicula, I shouted. Benicula turned my direction as if to ask where. Anywhere, I cried. Just get out of his way. Chester sprang. Benicula jumped. And in the flash of a second, they had changed positions. Chester now found himself flat on his back, owing to the slipperiness of the salad dressing in the bowl. And Benicula, too dazed to even think about food now, hovered, quivering on the table. Chester was having a great deal of difficulty getting back on his feet, but I knew it was only a matter of seconds before he'd attack again. And I knew also that Benicula was too petrified to do anything to save himself. So I did the only thing I could. I barked very loudly and very rapidly. The whole family rushed through the doors. Mr. Monroe must have co just come home because his coat was still on. Oh, no, cried Mrs. Monroe. That's it, Chester. This is Chester's last stand. Chester rolled his eyes heavenward and didn't even try to move. Mom, said Toby, tugging at his mother's arm. Look at Benicula. How did he get out of his cage? He looks scared. Of course he's scared, Mrs. Monroe said. We probably forgot to latch his cage and he got out, and I think Chester has been chasing him. Toby put his face close to the rabbit. Mom, the 
doesn't Benicula look kind of sick? We'd better take him all to the vet and see if any damage was done, she answered. I started to whimper. No need for me to go to the vet. Mr. Monroe petted my head. We might as well take Harold along, he said. He's probably due for his shots. Mrs. Monroe carefully picked Chester out of the salad bowl and carried him by the scruff of the neck to the kitchen. I'm going to give Chester a quick bath, she said to Mr. Monroe. Why don't you put together a fresh salad? Toby, you and Pete put Benicula back in his cage and then clean up the table. I didn't stick around for an assignment. This was not the time to be in the way. And besides, I now had a whole evening and night run worrying about the next morning's visit to the vet. This little effort of mine, I thought, has been a disaster in more ways than one.